Welcome everybody, how's it going? So today we are doing a CUDA worksheet tutorial on graphing linear equations using a table of values. This is Mr. West, let's get started. Now, for each one of these, we're gonna be sketching the graph of a line and we're gonna be using a table to do this. Surprisingly, this is tough for many students to do. And I think the big part of why it's tough is because they just don't know what to plug in for x. So let's go ahead and kind of simplify this a little bit. Let's look at number one. We have the equation y equals 3x minus 4. Now, as you can see, there are two different things that we can plug into this equation. There's two variables. We have an x and we have a y. So there's two things that can change. The way to do this most effectively is to just worry about one and seeing how it affects the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to input for x. We're going to just choose values for x, and then we're going to see what we get for y. Now, let's break this down into steps. So we have step number one. We are going to choose values for x. There's a little bit of strategy in determining what values to pick. And sometimes as you pick values, you might need to change them as you see, oh, I'm getting a lot of fractions. Maybe I should choose this number, okay? So we're gonna choose values for X. And I think it's important to include some negatives, zero, and then some positives. That way you kind of get an idea of, okay, if there's negative inputs, if there's a zero input, if there's a positive input, input how does this affect uh, our numbers? Now, this is the part that kind of confuses people. They're like, oh, well, what, what numbers do I pick? Well, it doesn't really matter. Part of it is we need to look at our available space. A lot of times you get a problem and you'll be given a uh, space like this. And as you can see, our biggest numbers and smallest numbers are between negative six and six for both the Y uh, and the X. So we should probably pick numbers of X that are smaller than negative or smaller than six and bigger than negative six okay so we got to go somewhere between there now i like to pick just to get started with with these i like to pick about five so i'm going to pick and nothing magical here i'm going to pick negative two negative one zero one and two okay so notice how i'm picking the same numbers uh the same numbers the negative version and the positive version of these numbers so i get negative two positive two negative one positive one okay now, how did I come up with those? I, I just thought those would be small, easy numbers to work with. That's it, and, and I decided to roll with it. Now, we'll see if those are good numbers to pick or bad numbers to pick as we kind of go along, but generally, you're, you're not gonna be wrong with picking numbers that are somewhere in the middle of your graph and just seeing what your line looks like, okay? So after we've picked our values, check, we've done this. Now, number two, we are going to plug in values for x, of x plug in values of x or 4x. I don't know. Let's put 4. Why not? Okay. Now that we've chosen, we're going to write out, uh, we need to substitute these values in. So I'm looking for some space. Doesn't look like, I'm going to borrow some space from number three. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to write the equation y equals three. I'm not going to write x though, minus four. Well, I'll write it and then I'll erase it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace x with each one of these values. Okay, so I'm gonna take turns here. So let me erase this, oops, too much. Okay, so what am I gonna write instead of x? The first thing I'm gonna input is negative two. And all I'm saying is, okay, once I plug in negative two, what happens with the y, okay? So now if I simplify this, let's use blue actually, I get three times negative two, order of operations, multiplication first, negative six minus four equals y, y equals negative 10. Okay, all I did was combine negative six, negative four equals y equals negative 10. As you can see, I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. We got off the charts on our first go. So if I went to go plot this point, go negative two, negative 10, that's off our charts. Hmm, probably not a good number to pick. So we wanna to try to find something that's on the chart. So neg negative two was a bad choice, but we didn't know, it's okay. I'm kinda of glad that we, we saw that it was a bad choice, okay? You know, I'm going to make this eraser smaller. No wonder, geez. Okay, so this was what? Ne uh, positive 3. Okay. Positive 3, and then we have an input, minus 4. Okay. So we already decided that negative 2 is a bad choice. We got negative 10. That doesn't really help us because it's off the graph. So let's go to our next one. So we're going to pick negative 1. What happens when we input negative 1? We get 
negative 3 minus 4. Okay, we get y equals negative 7. Hmm. Again, off the graph, we get negative 7. But at least this one's a little closer. Because we could even, like, we could kind of cheat it a little bit and say, okay, well, I know negative 7 is right about there. So I'm going to put a dot there just to get an idea of where this thing's going. All right. So I'm just going to leave that one. I'll erase that one because that's way off the chart. Okay, and now we have, oh, man. And now we have our next one. We're going to try zero. So we're going to plug in zero for x, and we're going to see what we get for y. Now, I'm erasing this each time. I would not recommend erasing. The reason why I'm erasing is because I don't have a lot of space. You should make sure that you show all these steps. It's going to use a lot of paper. I'm sorry. The trees are willing to sacrifice themselves for your mathematic uh uh, learning in your mathematic advancement. So make, it's okay. Now we're plugging in zero. We get three times zero is zero minus four. So we get y equals negative four. So as we plugged in zero for x, we got negative four for y. And this one's on the chart for sure. So we go zero, negative four. There's a point. That's our first one on the graph. So now we're going to go to positive one. What happens when we put, put in positive one? Okay, I think you guys are getting the hang of this. Okay, I'm going to make this smaller still. Yeah, let's go here. Why not? All right. So now we're going to plug in zero. We already plugged in zero. We're going to plug in one. So we have three times one is three minus four. We get negative one for y. So negative one. All right. So negative uh, one comma negative one. All right. Let's do one more. So we plug in two for x. What do we get for y? We plug in 2. As we solve, we get 6 minus 4. We get 2. <coughs> Pardon me. We get 2 for y. So we get 2 for x, 2 for y. So we're going to go 2, 2, and plug another point in. Okay. Now, the whole point is that we are going to get, and this looks like it needs to move over a little bit, move up. Okay. The whole point is we are going to get a line. Okay, if we connect the dots, we should get a line. If we did this correctly, it should be a straight line for linear equations. Okay, linear means a line. So these should be a straight line. And actually, I hope you see this. There's a pattern as you go along. So as you input each, as you get the hang of it, you might be able to figure out the pattern. So in this one, it went up three units into the right one. Up three to the right one. It did that every time. Up three, one, two, three, over one. Up one, two, three, over one. So as you figure out what the pattern is, and we're going to talk about that later, but that's called slope, you'll be able to just say, okay, if I go up one unit to the right, that's three, I'm going to use three units up from here, which is five. As you can see, three, five is on our graph. There's the point, three, comma, five. And each one of these are coordinates. I don't know if I said that earlier. Each one of these are coordinates. So 1, negative 1 is a point on the line. 0, comma, negative 4 is a point on the line. 2, comma, 2 is a point on the line. So these are all points on the line. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and we'll do another example. Hopefully we can do it a little bit quicker this time. So let's go over here. Make our table. Make your x. Make your y. So here's our x. Here's our y, okay? And now we're gonna be plugging in values of this guy. And I'm just gonna stick with all purple, that way you don't have to go back and forth with the color changes. I hope you guys understand. So now we have y equals negative two x plus two. Well, the first step is, and I'm gonna use, yeah, keep it purple, why not? The first step is we need to plug in values for x. So again, we're between negative six and six, both the x and the y, let's just stay there. I'm gonna keep the same formula. This, this same pattern for x. So I have y equals negative 2, and I'm going to plug in negative 2 first, plus 2. That's negative, uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, plus 2 is 6. So I get the, uh, 6 for y. So negative 2 comma 6. Look, it's right on our graph. Perfect. Okay, next up, I'm going to plug in negative 1. So I go ahead and change this to negative 1. I get positive 2 plus positive 2. Oh, that's 4. Hopefully you guys are starting to see a pattern. Okay, let's plug in zero. So now I plug in zero and I get negative two times zero, zero, and you get two and two. Look what's happening. Do you guys see? Every unit we increase of x, okay? So every time we move one to the right, 
okay? This is left and right, okay? So every time we move one to the right, this is going down two. So we could probably even just fill out the rest without plugging it into the formula. Hope you guys realize that. So we're gonna get zero here, minus two, and we're gonna get minus two here. Let's go ahead and plot all these points and see if it does in fact make a straight line. So one comma zero, two, negative two. What does that look like? Does that look like a straight line to you? I think it does. So we connect the dots and we realize that this pattern completion that we did here was actually correct. We found the pattern. We decided we didn't need to do this every time. If you want to do that every time, it's great. But I mean, it's kind of a waste of time if you know what the pattern is. Um, other, or if it's a super complicated equation. But the whole point is try to be efficient as possible, um, showing all your work, showing all your steps to make sure you understand that we just, we're just trying to get a good understanding of where this graph is going, okay? I think two problems is good for now. Um, all these ones, I, I essentially the same thing. This one just has fractions, so it's a little bit more tough. Actually, let me do, sorry, psych out. I'm gonna do one with fractions to show you kind of what the process, what my process is when we're doing fractions, okay? So if you want, go ahead and end this video. You got it. Boom, go for it. I'm not stopping you from watching any further. I'm not uh, getting sponsored by uh, Dollar Shave Club or anything like that. So <laughs> I'm not making any money off of this, but if you guys want a little bit of extra help, that's why I'm doing this. One last problem. Now, this is where I said you need to use some strategy. See how we have a fraction? So we're having a fraction times X. That fraction has a two in the denominator. So what does that mean we're gonna do? Well, in my opinion, the easiest thing to do is to make sure that we, uh, if there's divide by two, we wanna make sure that we choose numbers of X that are divisible by two. So for example, I'm not gonna choose one, I'm not gonna choose three, I'm not gonna choose five, because those are not divisible by two, okay? Instead, I'm gonna choose numbers like, I'm gonna choose numbers like uh, negative four, negative two, zero, two, Four, and the reason why I'm doing this is number one, it's on our chart, okay? Those numbers are on our chart. And number two, they're divisible by two, so we're gonna get uh, non-fractions for y, okay? And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we choose what points we choose for x, as long as we get at least two. You need two points to make a straight line. You can choose any values you want for x, and, and that's the whole point, okay? So let's go ahead and we're gonna do, see what happens when we plug in these cool values, these divisible by two values in for x. So we get y equals one half. We're gonna plug in negative four first, minus four. One half times negative four, well four times uh, divided by two is two, make it negative, minus four. So we get y equals negative six. That is on our graph, perfect. Negative four, negative six. Now we're gonna move on to negative two. See how effective this is if we choose numbers that are divisible by two? So you get one half times negative two, well that's negative one minus four, that's gonna be negative five. So we have negative two, negative five. Okay, now we're gonna plug in zero. Zero is the easiest one, definitely always include zero because you always get zero minus four and we get minus four for zero. Hopefully you guys can see the pattern. As we, what was that? Oh, that was negative five, I'm sorry and we get negative four. As we increase this by two, the y only increases, let me change the color here. As we increase this by two for x, the y only decreases by one. So each one of these is decreased by one, decreased by one. Okay, you could keep putting this in. The whole point we chose these numbers is because they're evenly divisible by two. So we get negative three and then negative two. And let's see if those make a straight line. If they don't make a straight line, we messed up. Uh, two, negative three, and then four, negative two. Now let's say we get a straight line. Let's say, for example, we did this and we got, we somehow messed up. We got negative two and then we got negative one, okay? If we plot these points, two, negative two, and four, negative one, two, negative two, and four, negative one, look what happens. See how we, change direction there. If you have a change in direction, that's no good. You want it to be a straight line with these. So our original ones, negative three and negative one, or negative two. Okay, negative uh, three and then negative two. 
this forms a straight line and that's how we know we did this correctly. Hope you found this helpful and that this makes graphing from a table much easier. I'm Mr. West, thanks for watching.